Chapter 24 Trapped Scarcely had the girls crouched down out of sight behind the altar when a beam of light shot up on the ceiling above the trap door. Then a head was thrust cautiously through the opening. By the by the beam from the electric torch, Penny and Louise saw Sing Lee, a revolver gripped in his hand, climb nimbly into the room. Behind him were three other Chinese men, squat little fellows with ugly, cruel faces. Penny could feel her chum trembling beside her, while her own heart was beating fast. The ladder leading up to the loft would be a complete giveaway. They had practically no chance to elude capture. Whoever here, come out quick or singly shoot, commanded the laundryman. Penny and Louise did not stir. However, the Chinese man began a systematic search of the room, and in a moment they were discovered. Determined not to submit without a struggle, Penny jerked free from Sing Lee and made a quick dash for the trap door. She swung her own feet down on the ladder and at the same time screaming loudly for help. Before she could descend, one of the Chinese men seized her roughly by the shoulders and clapped his hand over her mouth. She was hauled back into the room. Louise, too, received rough treatment. Let me go, let me go, she cried, striking and scratching at her captor. Working silently and effectively, Sing Lee bound the girl's arms behind her, trussed her feet, and inserted a gag in her mouth. Penny was treated in a similar fashion, save that it required two Chinese men to subdue her. Young ladies learn too much, remarked Sing Lee with a grim. Most unfortunate, Sing Lee regrets they now pay for knowledge. Turning to his three companions, he spoke rapidly in Chinese. Penny felt certain that the conversation pertained to a pr proposed flight, for immediately the men began to ransack the room. The bag of jewels was removed from the golden idol, and other articles of value connected with the altar were hastily dumped into a sack. Then, with a last glance about the room, Sing Lee made a mock bow to the girls, who lay bound and gagged on the floor. Young ladies, be comfortable here, maybe. He said with an evil leer, Sing Lee, hope you not get too warm. The four Chinese men descended from the loft, Sing Lee closing the trap door behind him. Penny and Louise heard the ladder being moved out of position. Then they were left in the darkness and silence. Both girls well realized the seriousness of their plight. They had told no one of their plan to visit Sing Lee's laundry. Laura and Miss Faraday were at Old Mansion next door, yet they would have no suspicion that anything was wrong, for they had naturally assumed that the girls were returning to Riverview. Penny felt sick at heart to realize that Sim Lee and his henchmen would escape with Miss Faraday's stolen paintings and the jewels. Now, due to her blundering, it might never be known what had become of the two missing men, Mr. Harmon and Mr. Merriman, not for a moment did she doubt that the Chinese men had been responsible for their disappearance, but she did not fully understand how he had accomplished his evil deeds. She had noticed an odd collection of levers and machinery behind the altar when she had crouched there. Undoubtedly, it played some part in Sing Lee's scheme. Penny squirmed uncomfortably, testing the strength of her fetters. The Chinese had done their work well. The cords about their wrist had been tied so tightly she could not hope to loosen them. Then there was slightly a little more play in the throngs about her ankles. By long and hard work, she might be able to get her feet loose and hobble a few steps. Hope suddenly stirred within Penny. She could roll over to the wall. She might be able to pound it with her feet. It was possible that Laura and Mrs. Faraday would hear the sound. Louise watched her chum with puzzled eyes, but when, Pen but when Penny had rolled into position and began beating a rapid tattoo on the west wall, she caught the idea. She pulled herself close to Penny, and they kicked with their feet in unison. Very quickly, the girls grew weary and discouraged. There was no response to their signals. They recalled their advice to Mrs. Faraday and Laura, warning them not to go near room 7, even if the sounds were heard. The, 
couple likely would be too frightened to investigate. Resting from her vigorous efforts, Penny became aware of an unusual odor in the room. Smoke! Suddenly, Sing Lee's words came back to her. His sneering remark that he'd hoped that she would not be too warm. Then the building had been fired. A wisp of smoke filtered up through the crack along the tar trap door. In a few minutes, the entire laundry would be an inferno. Louise, too, had become aware of danger. She rolled over and moaned. Fear drove Penny to make one desperate attempt to draw the attention to their plight. First pulling herself into sitting position, she wriggled into her knees and then stood up, balancing herself against the wall. An inch at a time, she hobbled to the window which overlooked the river. Far below, she could see the murky cobalt flowing tranquilly beneath the stars. No hope, no hope, thought Penny. And there her heart leapt as she, distingu as she distinguished the black outline of a rowboat floating close behind the building. It was Mudcat Joe. She was almost certain, but, she could, but could she attract his attention? Penny tried, tried budding the window pane goat fashion, but, it, but the noise did not cause the riverman to glance up. The boat was slowly drifting away. In desperation, the girl turned with a sudden movement, swung her back, and shoulder hard against the glass. It shattered, and she heard the broken pieces splash as they fell into the river. Penny leaned slightly forward through the opening. She could see Mudcat Joe, and she believed that he had observed her. He looked upward and shouted, What's wrong up there? Penny could not answer, but she saw that Mudcat realized something was amiss. Then apparently he smelled smoke, for he shot his boat to the landing, crying loudly, Fire! Fire! Penny collapsed weakly on the floor, but she had done everything within her power and now could only wait and pray for rescue. Did Mudcat Joe understand that someone was imprisoned in the loft? And would he know where to find the ladder and reach the trap door? Tormenting questions. Each moment the smoke became heavier, making breathing more difficult. Soon, it would be impossible for anyone to reach the loft. Penny's fate and that of Louise rested in the hands of Mudcat Joe. Da-do-da-do. Da,